one and all. Uh, myself, Dr. Puro Desai, welcome you all to the series of a webinar organized by faculty of Homeopathy Parum University. Uh, it's my pleasure uh, that uh, this initiation we have started with the guidelines of our dynamic uh, management. Uh, we have the president, Dr. Devansu Patel, sir, who is very aggressive and uh, doing the uh, new things, novel things, uh, time to time. And we are also getting a very good support from our uh, director, uh, Dr. Komal Patel, madam. She used to uh, motivate all of us to do all the things uh, time to time. And one another thing is that the environment of Parul University itself is so vibrant that we are continuously doing these vibrant things. Uh, for assuring this persistent series of webinar, uh, the uh, key persons are all the four principals of uh, homeopathic colleges of Paru University. So we have uh, Dr. Hina Rawal, Madam, she is the principal of Ahmedabad Homeopathic Medical College. Uh, Dr. B.P. Panda, sir, is the principal of uh, Paru Institute of Homeopathy and Research. And Dr. Uh, Hitat Mehta, sir, he is the principal of uh, uh, Rajkot Homeopathic Medical College and uh, myself, Dr. Puro Desai, regularly uh, doing all this activity time to time and uh, we are thankful to the audience that they are also supporting us in this venture because uh, we have observed that this is the 65th webinar and we, we could observe almost 3000 plus audience in the webinar series. So uh, we will also do not disappoint you and we will come con continuing with you with uh, uh, new faculty members of homeopathy uh, for this kind of uh, webinars. So without wasting time, I'm just handing the uh, to Dr. Hina Madam to uh, introduce about the today's speaker. Over to Dr. Hina Madam. Thank you, Puro, sir. Dr. Rajiv Rui Vegas Perez has done his post-graduation in homeopathy. He is presently assistant professor in Department of Homeopathic Materia Medica at Sri Kamakshi Devi Homeopathic Medical College, Goa. He is having 10 years of clinical experience at Shanti Homeopathic Clinic in Goa. He was awarded the Best Teachers Award in 2010 by Sri Kamakshi Devi Homeopathic Medical College. He is also the recipient of Hanuman Award in 2018, awarded by Hamai Goa branch. Sir is an active member of HERI Mumbai. He is an enthusiastic participant at various training programs and CMEs. Sir is regularly invited to deliver talks on subjects related to diet, human health, acute case management, awareness and prevention of HIV AIDS, sex education, COVID and many more such topics. Sir is an active promoter and participant in community services and has published about more than 40 articles in various subjects in various journals of homeopathy. It is my pleasure and privilege today to welcome sir to the 65th webinar of Parul University. Please, Dr. Rajiv, sir. A very good afternoon to all the principals, to all the faculty members, practitioners, my dear students, friends, and family. This is Shri Kamakshi Devi Homeopathic Medical College, Shiroda, Goa. I have done my undergraduation here and I'm presently working. I would like to dedicate this talk to all the faculty members, past and present of this college, Kamakshi Devi Homeopathic Medical College. Today's talk, I have divided into three parts. The first part will be case study. The second part, is going to be the medicine proper part and the third part is the homeopathic management so let's get started so this is a case of a 52 year old married man terrible vertigo since one week his vertigo was worse when he bends forward when he bends sideways and when he stands up his vertigo was worse on closing the eyes. Vertigo was associated with nausea on and off and the vertigo was relieved by inducing vomiting. Now this man uh, basically runs a restaurant 
and uh, he used to feel you know nauseated whenever he would eat sweets since the time that uh, this vertigo has come his appetite has increased he also had a dull headache in the occipital region which would extend down into the neck there was also marked tiredness and he would not feel like doing any work so he was compelled to lie down or to sit quietly he would not tolerate any light which is emitted either from the mobile or from the television he could not tolerate he could not bear any noise he would just lie down by covering his face with a cloth so that he is not disturbed by the noises nor by the brightness which is around him since the last few months he was complaining of not hearing so well his appearance was looking a very uh, low spirited depressed intoxicated and sad he was you know sitting hanging on the chair and in between he was sighing on and off now this man i already knew in the past as being a loving man as a hospitable man who was always smiling and he was happy go lucky type in the old days he used to be a hot patient but at present his uh, thermal state changed to a chilly patient when i saw him in uh, in my clinic i was surprised i could not accept that this is the same man that i knew so i went on to inquire what went wrong with him so when i asked him what was how did this start he told me that uh, his allopathic doctor introduced him to this tablet called as metformin one month ago the purpose was to reduce his weight he was not a diabetic but his weight was very high 116 kilos so since one month he gave him one tablet a day and since the last one week the tablet was increased to two tablets a day now the moment the tablet was doubled this person started feeling very uneasy he started feeling hunger pains and uh, usually he was preferring to have warm drinks but since last one week he is desiring to have soft drinks and he said when i have soft drinks it helps me in in these moments also he started complaining of uh, loose motions after every meal he started uh, having loose motions and that stool which he was passing was not a satisfactory type so in last one week after two starting after starting two tablets of metformin he lost 3 kilos and everything that he was eating was tasting sweet so much so that he developed an aversion to sweets a uh, the, the new development was suddenly he developed a strong liking for oranges he also used to like sour things like star fruit or even a lemon he could just bite it and chew it in addition to this he started liking green chilies the, the untreated ones he would go to the stalls on the road side and eat chilies green chilies six to seven of them and many a times these uh, uh, people who sell this they would warn him that don't eat so much it's extremely bad the amount so when i heard this it was confirmed that he is suffering from a loss of the taste there was also change in his disposition this once upon a time happy man had turned into a very cranky person he would get irritated if you ask him any questions he had not shown up to his uh, restaurant business for the last one week and there was a strong fear that he will have some serious heart problem so uh, he would just lie down all day so i just want you to uh, make a totality of what you have heard now of this case i just uh, rewind for you this is his appearance the vertigo nausea with vomiting intolerance to light increased appetite can't bear noise okay no interest 
cause is known okay that is the abuse of metformin and this so any suggestions for any remedy from the audience please type in the chat box suggestions to help you i will share with you my totality okay so the totality which i took after seeing this case was desire for oranges <laughs> sensitive to the slightest noises this loss of taste and vertigo on closing the eyes any suggestions please tell me uh, if any remedies are put in the chat box uh, uh, dr rajay they will not be able to write it over here because they are on facebook live ah uh, okay okay yeah. so uh, so this is the totality which i took i referred kent's repertory okay only what is characteristic i have taken then i went to read materia medica i have taken references so borix materia medica i found this sensitive to light and finds pleasure in nothing right vertigo with nausea and vomiting under theridion if you look in bogus synoptic key you will find this cardiac anxiety and better by rest so these were my references before making the prescription and the miasm is psychotic now why i am saying psychotic i will explain this in more detail as we go ahead okay so the prescription of my choice was theridion 200 one single dose which was given on 16th february 2019 now let us see what happened after the prescription so immediately the next day the wife was surprised to see that the husband has changed and become in good form and he has resumed the uh, restaurant work so here you see him you know preparing the stock for his restaurant he was also uh, uh, dropping his children two daughters to the college and to the school he was doing the marketing for the restaurant then what happened after one week after one week uh, when he came he told me that as soon as he began with this medicine okay the vertigo became all right 90% he did not feel like eating chilies instead of chilies he started eating bel puri i'm sure all of you know what is bel puri it's a mixture of sour spicy and sweet after this medicine he was able to walk for long he was able to stand for long both of which are necessary to work in a restaurant and he gained 1 kilo those 3 kilos which he had lost with metformin he gained 1 kilo he was now able to feel hungry at the time of breakfast and in between breakfast to noon he would not feel like eating anything that means the hunger pains which he had had resolved then he also told me that some neck pain which he has not mentioned earlier that became 70% all right so sometimes patients forget to tell some associated complaint which they verify in the follow up so this neck pain is a thing like that he was eating everything normal he was eating non veg his stool became satisfactory and he was able to uh, uh, watch the mobile but he was not able to tolerate the television for long okay and his mood changed from that sad depressed into happy this is within one week then follow up after one month now after one month <coughs> so he's uh, the patient is still enjoying his oranges he is still enjoying his lime soda he is become more alert okay uh, he is able to listen to music and in any restaurant you know a restaurant without music is like tea without sugar so he is able to enjoy music and only thing is whenever he ate bread it would taste sweet okay now uh, in this period from one week to one month there was episode of some vomiting which i consider as a soric elimination but this vomiting episode was not a troublesome one something for which he would seek a uh, treatment okay then uh, he would still prefer for lemonade he would still prefer sour fruits like star fruit but the intensity had reduced of this cravings 
he was able to fulfill every responsibility of the business and of the family and now at the one month he decided that he will you know pursue the work of his visa because he had a plan to go to london so he decided that he will be going to mumbai when he went to mumbai he attended a musical concert okay and uh, no neck pain stool evacuation was satisfactory so uh, this person who had who was depressed started and changed into a happening person you know going to a musical concert is a big development and a positive one then we see the follow up after one and a half month after one and a half month when he came see no prescription was repeated in between after one month when he came he came with a box of laddus he opened the box the first laddu he ate and the box he left for me so when i saw him eating the laddu then it was clear to me you know that uh, he has really improved because he had uh, this metformin had made everything that he e eating into sweet and he developed aversion to sweet and now again it has returning back to its normal where he is able to enjoy sweet he was uh, still liking his lemon soda there was no episode of any vomiting in this 15 days if he wears helmet while riding the bike then little bit the neck would hurt but otherwise it was not a problem and he was able to bend down and tie his shoe laces see initially when you see the vertigo was worse by bending forward now he is bending forward and tying his shoe laces and his wife told me that he is the most energetic person in the whole family now mind you his second daughter is an athlete she is a footballer she is a sprinter you know she is a all rounder and uh, the wife is saying he is more energetic than any of the family members this man was getting nausea when he used to eat sweet but now he is able to eat two bananas without any nausea so that was also restored to normal and there is no craving for oranges now this has not i have nothing against any fruit vendor and no abdominal pain now this man started going to the theater to watch movies in the theater the movies are shown you know in with lot of sound and music so he is able to tolerate all that no desire for chilies and his weight was 113 kilos so with regards to management the guidelines given by dr hanuman in aphorism 262 that no restriction should be done in the desires or aversions in the food drink or temperature especially uh, with regards to acute disease so we should not shout at him and stop him from eating sour things or stop him from having so soft drink because in acute disease it is allowed right the second uh, reference here from uh, dr hanuman's organon is the classification of the disease so dr hanuman speaks of artificial iatrogenic diseases those diseases which are produced as a result of prolonged allopathic heroic medicines that too in large and ever increasing doses so from one tablet metformin to two tablets metformin a day and such diseases dr hanuman says are produced because of allopathic malpractice are most incurable ones and if treatment is continued for the long period okay so then how to solve these cases so here the disposition in the acute has to be compared with his usual disposition and this becomes the key factor in the selection of the remedy right now let us consider the medicine proper part see vertigo is a very challenging symptom for us clinicians simply because uh, patients widely differ by what they mean when they use the word dizziness so we have to uh, clarify from them are they meaning that the room is spinning do they mean blackout do they mean unsteadiness so my friend was going on the motorbike and a car came from behind and knocked him from behind he fell down after that he started with strong vertigo especially when he is lying on the bed ct scan was normal 
when he is turning in the bed, the vertigo was there. Okay, so I prescribed him conium, and then he became all right. But in him, the whole room was spinning, was turning round. The whole uh, surrounding was turning round. So, patient may say dizzy, but this is a vertigo. This is a true vertigo. Okay, uh, CT scan came normal because this true vertigo has to do with the inner ear problem and not with the brain, right? Now, uh, when you hear this word dizziness, okay, we have to also ask the patient whether he feels, you know, pulled towards one side or pulled towards the ground and what are the associated feelings with this? Is he feeling nauseated? Is he feeling clammy? Is he feeling flushed? So other factors. Also, one more point to remember is the type of medication that he is taking. Because many a times the drugs that we take can contribute to the problem, right? Now, uh, This word dizziness, okay, differentiate between these three. See, if it is cervical spondylosis, then dizziness will always be associated with the head movement. When he is moving the head, then he feels dizzy. When you see the neck, the neck will have restricted neck movement. And when you do local examination of the neck, you will find crepitus, okay. Now, uh, how will you, what is this postural hypotension in the elderly? That when the elderly, I remember my grandmother, she would wake up suddenly from the bed, you know, and she would sometimes fall. Hello. All forwards on whatever the furniture is then 20 milligrams of mercury of the systolic or if there is a drop in 10 millimeters of mercury of the diastolic then it is abnormal and it is going in favor of the postural hypotension. Okay. And the third one, how do you uh, clarify if it is hyperventilation giving rise to dizziness? Just make the patient to pant rapidly for two minutes. If that brings about dizziness, then the cause is hyperventilation. Right? So, uh, these were aspects in regards with elderly people. Now, uh, when you say dizziness or blackout, what we call in the local language, this can also be felt when you are on recreational drugs. You can also feel dizzy when you are on alcohol. Dizziness may also be created in sleep deprivation. Recently there was an accident in Goa. The person has driven a truck from Satara, Maharashtra overnight without you know, much of break to Goa. Only, four hour, only uh, 40 minutes were left for him to reach the destination. And he being a diabetic, he became, you know, he had a blackout. The whole truck got destroyed. Whatever was inside was destroyed. Luckily, no life was uh, destroyed in this process. So, sleep deprivation can also cause dizziness, right? But these are episodes. Suppose if dizziness starts becoming paroxysmal, then we have to find out that if it is happening in a particular environment. To give you an example, uh, many people nowadays, especially in Corona period, feel dizzy to go in crowded places like election rallies or in the weddings. You know, now here dizziness. How will you verify if it is uh, this type of paroxysm? This dizziness will be associated with anxiety pertaining to crowd, and there will be hyperventilation attack. 
So that is how you differentiate uh, this uh, giddiness. Another reference I would like to give here. Sometimes, you know, old people will come to you and say, I'm feeling dizzy in my legs. What it means? It means unsteadiness. If you have this kind of a presentation with lightheadedness, sometimes this can also suggest a cardiovascular etiology, meaning the patient may be going into a congestive cardiac failure. This you can verify, uh, verify by doing a 2D echo. Okay. And if it is positive towards, uh, you know, cardiovascular etiology, you will also get the associated features like anasarca and, and very strong form of breathlessness. Even while speaking, he will go breathless. Even while eating, he will go breathless. So, uh, you know, dizziness can give rise to so many things, right? So we need to know uh, each of the reference. Now we go to the next part. That is lightheadedness. Now, when do you feel lightheaded? See, many times now Corona uh, third wave was very much prominent. When people are getting febrile illness, that time you feel lightheaded. When your blood pressure is on the lower side, you feel lightheaded. Also, on 15th August, when you are standing, you know, uh, for the flag hosting and long speeches are given, that time also you feel this uh, painting episode. That is also accompanied with lightheadedness. Okay. And also when you have palpitation, you can feel lightheaded. Then we go to the uh, next thing that is fainting and fit. See, patient will use the word dizziness, but he may mean fainting. And we have to rule out fits. So how do we do this? So I have put it in a simple chart form. Your fits is nothing but the seizure. And... Uh, Fainting, which is there, fainting is your syncope. Huh? Now, uh, when do you experience this uh, fainting? So one will experience fainting when there is intense fear, when there is intense emotion. Like, for example, when the results are out, then people faint. Or when the death news is given, right? If it is fainting, always remember that the patient will be relieved when he lies down. Also, you have some conditions where fainting can be caused by the head movement. Moving the head is causing fainting. Now, that is indicative of a different pathology. What it indicates? Vertebro-basilar insufficiency in terms of the blood supply. Or it may also suggest carotid sinus hypersensitivity. Fainting, uh, in fainting, also you have something called a situational fainting. For example, if you are coughing very intensely, Okay, then you can have a fainting, that is situational fainting. Or to give you another example, in renal colic, where there is urinary tract infection, when you are passing urine also you can faint because the pain is very intense. Okay, now uh, look at this slide. How do we uh, differentiate fainting from fits? Fits is your jatka or the seizure, okay, which can have a epileptic origin. If it is fainting, then there will be always a emotion, fear. You know, I remember uh, fainting, you know, in my uh, so uh, in fainting, there will be fear or there will be pain or when you are standing for a prolonged time. Okay, now in fainting, the person is expecting a loss of consciousness, whereas in fits, it is instant and he becomes instantly becomes unconscious. He is not expecting to be unconscious in uh, seizure, but he becomes instantly. There is no precipitating factor in fits, but for fainting, there will be a precipitating factor like prolonged st standing, severe pain, fear, you know. Then uh, fainting will take uh, time to develop over minutes. By that time, you can tell your friend who is around you, just hold me, I'm feeling something or give me a chair to sit. This does not happen in case of your seizure because that is instant unconsciousness. If it is a seizure or a fit, you always have these associated uh, uh, symptoms, you know, like tongue biting will be there and incontinence of urine will be there. You don't get 
tongue biting and incontinence of urine in case of fainting what you get in fainting is sweating and sweating is not so commonly found in case of a fit if it is a fit you find the bluish discoloration of the skin what we call as cyanosis and if it is fainting the patient become pale and white then you check the blood pressure if it is fainting blood pressure will be always on the lower side whereas if it is a uh, fit the blood pressure may come normal what will come abnormal in fit is your eeg elect eeg will be abnormal whereas in fainting patient if you send to the health center and you get a eeg done then it will come normal so this is how we differentiate so only one point remains now from this slide and that is what is true vertigo so first let us see uh, what is vertigo see uh, vertigo is a symptom of imagined spinning imagined rotation and imagined unsteadiness the patient feels that they are moving or their surrounding is moving now these sensations what do they point to they point to primarily that the problem is in the labyrinth of the inner ear sorry or the problem is in the lesion to the eighth cranial nerve or somewhere lesion is there in the central pathway that means the nuclei in the brain has got affection so when you say true vertigo we always mean that the problem is caused by the inner ear what is there inside the inner ear in the inner ear you have the vestibular mechanism so when that dysfunctions we call that as the peripheral vertigo now vertigo which is there can be classified into two based on the site where the vertigo is originating if it is originating in the inner ear we call it peripheral and suppose if vertigo is originating not in the inner ear from other causes in the brain in the brain stem or you know uh, elsewhere other than the inner ear we call it as a central vertigo okay now let us first see uh, the three commonest oral causes of the vertigo that means ear related causes of the vertigo so those i have mentioned here acute labyrinthine dysfunction number 1 second commonest oral cause is your benign positional vertigo and the third is your meniere's disease okay which which has been mentioned here meniere's disease so these are the three commonest ear causes of the vertigo now uh, what is this acute labyrinthine dysfunction this is uh, what we call in ent as the otitis interna how does it present you will have severe episode of vertigo that to of a sudden onset so my neighbor she is a lady suddenly she came up with a severe episode of vertigo sudden and she was not able to raise her head even 1 inch above the pillow that would cause lot of nausea lot of vomiting okay why does this happen this happens because of a viral cause or vascular labyrinthitis or idiopathic cause and this type of severe uh, episode of vertigo will last for days together and further it will progress into the next level that is your benign positional vertigo what is benign positional vertigo benign positional vertigo can be recognized you know by short lasting onset of vertigo which is connected with movement of the head so you move the head and then you get a short on a uh, short lasting vertigo why does you, why do you get this benign positional vertigo it is happening because of trauma suppose you have an injury to the head you know facial trauma for example the vestibular nerve can sustain damage and that gives rise to benign positional vertigo okay other cause for benign positional vertigo is idiopathy and the third important uh, uh, cause ear cause for the vertigo is your meniere's disease what is meniere's disease this in ent we call as the otosclerosis it is a condition where there is accumulation of endo limb which is causing distension and increased pressure in the membranous labyrinth and at the same time there is destruction of sensory cells of ampulla and the cochlea now you have to remember 
that initially it will start unilaterally but it will then affect the other side also what is the hallmark of your menius disease there are three symptoms triad of menius disease first symptom is tinnitus tinnitus is sound hissing sound crackling sound singing sound okay in the ear tinnitus is a must for your menius disease hearing loss is a must for menius disease and incapacitating vertigo this is a these three are must for the menius disease so menius disease so now we have to also know how to differentiate acute labyrinthine dysfunction from menius disease how do you differentiate these two both are sight is common that is the inner ear is causing this but how do you differentiate these two both of them will have nausea and vomiting but the difference between acute labyrinthine dysfunction and menius disease is in menius disease okay the patient will always be better by lying down horizontally in a static position like how my neighbor lady was lying down on the pillow okay in case of labyrinthine dysfunction okay uh, the nausea is more marked as compared to vomiting this vomiting will be a passive vomiting it is not the projectile vomiting which you get in space occupying lesion in the brain okay uh, what about menius disease in menius disease the uh, tinnitus will be there in menius disease vomiting is more marked as compared to nausea so just the reverse of what you get in acute labyrinthine dysfunction the second difference is the menius disease patient is better in the vertical position rather than the horizontal position which is liked by the patient who is having acute labyrinthine dysfunction so uh, this is a differentiation other last differentiation is acute labyrinthine dysfunction is unilateral whereas menius disease you will have bilateral involvement one more additional finding you can get on examination in acute labyrinthine dysfunction that is the mastoid process will be very tender which you do not get in your menius disease all right so uh, we have now uh, understood what is uh, peripheral vertigo then what is central vertigo any vertigo which is arising from sights other than the inner ear we term it as the central vertigo and these are the causes maybe it is tia transient ischemic attack that is the vascular cause or maybe ischemic cause as in the vertebro basilar artery right so other causes see uh, when we talk of uh, central vertigo in central vertigo how do you differentiate central vertigo from peripheral vertigo in central vertigo it is just a feeling of unsteadiness in central vertigo you never get nausea and vomiting you don't get the room which is spinning because inner ear is not involved here here you get just a feeling of unsteadiness central vertigo the uh, vertigo is constant vertigo the vertigo is intermittent type classic example for peripheral vertigo of intermittent nature is what you call as a travel sickness what is there in travel sickness intermittent vertigo is there accompanied by nausea vomiting right that is your travel sickness now we have to you know try to understand uh, what are the causes for the central vertigo what are the causes now one very important cause for central vertigo is abuse of drugs now see if you have hypertension naturally you have to take amino glycosides now these drugs can are auto toxic that means they will damage your ear and they will give rise to uh, they will da damage your system giving rise to central vertigo there are also other medicines like streptomycin gentamicin aspirin your antihistamines as well as your non uh, you know non specific uh, non steroidal uh, anti inflammatory drugs you know like furosemide so these are the commonest causes drug related causes of your vertigo see this case which i have shown you this case is a case of central vertigo why did that patient uh, come with vertigo this patient of the, our case came with vertigo probably because of hypoglycemia that was created by the high dose of metformin right 
so uh, the other examples in terms of diagnosis where you can get uh, central vertigo is neo uh, neoplasms that is your tumors vascular issues you know like ischemia also other example for vascular brain stem uh, problem creating central vertigo is your lateral medullary syndrome even if there is an aneurysm you will get a central vertigo and if you have degeneration degenerative changes like multiple sclerosis or seringobulbia they will also give rise to your central vertigo when do you consider red flag you know where in vertigo you will have to do urgent investigation and urgent uh, referral this has to be thought of when you have transient ischemic attack or when you have vertebro basilar ischemia see because in these two condition the blood pressure will go very high the person the patient will come with visual disturbances will have neck problems will have loss of coordination and this arthria speech problem so you have to refer it to the higher centers urgently and it has to be investigated and managed separately so when you see a case of vertigo always ask the patient to describe what he means by giddiness how long does it last does it last for hours because your acute labyrinthine dysfunction lasts for hours to days right the same happens in meniere's disease so you can differentiate based on how long is it is it intermittent if it is intermittent it is peripheral vertigo if it is continuous it is your central vertigo then what are the precipitating factors is it change in position then it will be benign positional vertigo is it connected with head movement then it is separate okay then medications autotoxic medications so uh, a drug history is very important then whether there is nausea and vomiting if nausea and vomiting is present it's very clear in your ear involvement is there and it is a peripheral vertigo now why do we ask about ear surgery because sometimes when you do ear surgery there will be a leak of the csf okay and then you can uh, also come up with you know discharge from the ear now that also will have to be differentiated if it is a csf it will be clear discharge if it is mucoid discharge that means middle ear is involved if it is purulent discharge this is basically seen in the external ear and the middle ear uh, because of pseudomonas infection so this is all the differentiation you have to do and the last thing tinnitus and deafness so this is directly connected to your meniere's disease so now <clears throat> to be very clear you know what we are exactly uh, what the patient is meaning when he says uh, dizziness we have to apply this formula called as the tina formula where t stands for the time why time is important if it is a vascular process these symptoms will have sudden onset if it is a inflammatory process or infective process uh, it will take hours days and weeks to develop okay i of this uh, tina stands i stands for influencing factors what we call as modalities in homeopathy aggravating and relieving factors n stands for the nature that means what is the site what is the radiation what is the character of the pain what is the severity of the pain on a scale of 1 to 10 and you will have to compare it with his previous illness and the last that is the associated features this is very important let me give you a different example here as uh, with this a aspect of analysis of symptom suppose you have chest pain you have shortness of breath you have fainting and you have palpitation now these four symptoms in association with each other there is chest pain palpitation shortness of breath and fainting what does this suggest this suggests two things it can suggest anemia also it can suggest arrhythmia of the heart also so you know association of symptom also helps us to make the diagnosis so i have put this tina analysis to all these condition this vertigo this ald is nothing but the acute labyrinthine dysfunction this is meniere's disease what is the onset of this inner ear problem always sudden benign positional for a brief duration okay whereas these two will last for hours what is the course in benign it is for few weeks this will go over months 
if it is meniere's disease it is recurrent there will be some places where the patient is all right that means is in remission then again it comes in meniere's disease still the organ of faulty is destroyed hearing loss you will never get in case of benign positional vertigo as well as acute labyrinthine disease nor you will get tinnitus nausea and vomiting will be there okay less here but more here and here i told you nausea is more whereas in meniere's disease vomiting is more what is important in uh, meniere's disease is hearing is affected bilaterally as well as tinnitus is present right then we go to this central causes drug toxicity now this case which i have shown you today that is the case of drug toxicity and how was the onset acute onset if you look at the course i have not mentioned it here it may be reversible may not be reversible and partial adaptation will occur okay so hearing loss may be there even our patient said last few months he was not able to hear properly nausea and vomiting was there in our patient tinnitus may be present in our patient it was not present the other central cause can be a tumor which is pressing on the vestibular nerve that is the eighth cranial nerve if it is a tumor it will be a slow insidious onset and impairment of hearing will be there tinnitus will be there plus other pressure symptoms because the tumor will be pressing on the fifth sixth seventh cranial nerve so this is uh, the thing now i have just put a summarized view for you all the different causes ear causes right tumors now what is this acoustic neuroma acoustic neuroma is your tumor pressing this is usually found in the age group of 40 to 60 meniere's disease you will find in the age group of 20 to 40 right so i just put it uh, in in the the whole vertigo from different causes okay the brain stem causes then these two i have i put them in red because these are the red flag you have to immediately refer these two cases others you can manage auditory causes sometimes you know you can also have uh, the spread of infection from the middle ear to the inner ear there is one test for this uh, uh, wherein the tragus of the ear is pressed on the external auditory canal if that gives rise to tinnitus or vertigo it 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 uh, tells us that there is a communication between middle ear and inner ear right even if you have eustachian tube block then also uh, you you can have a auditory type of a vertigo so this is the whole summary which includes drugs and other so here is the patient for you when you see a patient like this now you know what all has to be thought of and how uh, the you have to differentiate okay the symptoms of such a patient now we come to the most interesting part that is the miasmatic division of vertigo now why is it important to do miasmatic division of vertigo miasmatic division of vertigo is an important step for choice of the right medicine to understand character of vertigo in homeopathic sense we have to know what was the condition of the patient prior to the development of the vertigo so let us see soric vertigo how will soric vertigo present it will come very acutely very strongly and always soric vertigo comes after emotional problems emotions like shock anger sadness worry about love affairs financial stress this is causing the soric vertigo other problem which is causing soric vertigo is fasting hypoglycemia over acidity okay or dehydration a lack of sleep you know constipation giving rise to vertigo is a soric vertigo soric vertigo is also caused because of wrong position of sleeping or wrong position of sitting so today we have a lot of it industry so they are sitting in the long wrong position that may produce vertigo that we term as the soric uh, vertigo the uh, vertigo which you get because of low blood pressure that is also soric uh, vertigo soric vertigo you may also get together with infection infections like gastroenteritis or influenza where there is lot of sneezing and watery discharge from the eyes so what you have to remember is soric vertigo is always worse while changing the position if a soric uh, vertigo patient sees something moving moving train moving car they will get vertigo 
so when secretions like nasal secretions eye secretions stop maybe because of treatment by antibiotics or other treatment then the vertigo will get aggravated that is a soric vertigo soric vertigo will be better by resting with the eyes closed <laughs> so that's the end of soric vertigo <laughs> then we come to psychotic vertigo when i showed you the case i just told you the myism is psychotic but i said details we will see now and so listen carefully psychotic vertigo which is there these people do not want to do any physical work this was there in our patient one more <coughs> very interesting thing psychotic vertigo people if they go do physiotherapy or or you know sauna steam bath if they do this will always aggravate them <coughs> because these sciences you know they don't have a natural law of healing so it becomes a disadvantage to the psychotic patient what can be the causes for a psychotic vertigo commonest causes hypertension or a brain tumor or a embolia in the brain or uremia right in addition to vertigo you will have also rheumatic symptoms cervical spondylosis hernia operation you know these elements will be there in psychotic vertigo psychotic vertigo is the vertigo of your meniere syndrome uh, vertigo because of hyperthyroidism is a psychotic vertigo the vertigo which you get after operation maybe you operate a pile polyp fistula you correct a dns or you do hysterectomy vertigo which arises after this operation is a psychotic vertigo and psychotic vertigo comes with disturbances of seeing and that's why the uh, vertigo of psychotic nature comes when closing the eyes see our patient of our case was worse than closing eyes so there is a psychotic vertigo psychotic vertigo is always worse during the day okay and uh, worse by cold wet weather then we go to the tubercular vertigo now in tubercular the circulation is disturbed the assimilation is disturbed blood is not reaching the brain suppose you go on a highest uh, mountain in switzerland and you come up with vertigo that is tubercular vertigo vertigo after vaccination is tubercular vertigo vertigo in the aged people so there is a deficit in spite of eating well that is a tubercular vertigo vertigo because of radiation like before a thunderstorm that is tubercular vertigo tubercular vertigos are worse in the morning worse after sleep and worse by narrow places maybe in an aircraft or in a lift and if they have epistaxis then uh, tubercular vertigo will feel better if they are busy tubercular vertigo will feel better and then we come to the last that is the syphilitic vertigo syphilitic vertigo would always start in the back of the head this always goes together with serious diseases like maybe kidneys are not functioning or there is sclerosis of the brain or there is rapidly advancing alzheimers in the brain or fast growing tumor in the brain so mysteriously these diseases are advancing and very destructive diseases also you can have in syphilitic diseases of the heart with vertigo or problem of addiction with vertigo addicted to drugs alcohol tablets tobacco syphilitic vertigo is always worse at night worse in company worse in summer and they feel better in cool temperatures or when tumors open you know breast tumor opening fistula opening they feel better now i will come to the therapeutics part i will comment on some medicines which are proven useful in the treatment of vertigo so first is your aconite what is there in aconite fear and shock that is why they want somebody around this vertigo which you get in aconite is a benign positional vertigo when the patient is rising from the bed rising from the chair then he gets that vertigo the vertigo of aconite will be accompanied with deep nausea felt in the stomach with severe thirst the vertigo of aconite feels better when you put a, co a cool cloth on the forehead also you have worse when trying to lift the head up like in acute labyrinthine this one that is your aconite vertigo then we go to the next remedy <coughs> umbra gracia 
Why there is uh, vertigo in Umbra gracia? Because of dispute in the family. You see this vertigo in the old people after insult. See grandmothers. Somebody insults the grandmother because they are uh, become old now. They are not of much use. They are made to feel dumb. And this you will get in the sensation, you know, as if the head is, the brain is having become cold feeling. As if brain is loose and moving inside the cranium. Has to lie down. Our grandmother mostly lie down. Most of the day goes in sleeping and they are worse by sleeping. That is the tragedy. Okay. In Umbra Gracia, the empty feeling at the back of the head and mental disturbances. Sleep deprivation is also an important cause in Umbra Gracia. What does Umbra Gracia want? It wants a cool environment, AC, and does not want music, does not want uh, anyone speaking loudly. Grandmothers don't like anyone talking loudly, right? So that is your Umbra Gracia. Then we go to the third drug, that is your Argentum nitricum. Argentum nitricum, what is the cause? Alcoholism is the cause for the vertigo. Multiple sclerosis is the cause of the vertigo. Epilepsy is the cause of the vertigo because of tumor in the brain and disturbed digestion. So in agenda nitricum, vertigo before exams, vertigo before epilepsy, worse on closing the eyes. This is the psychotic vertigo. Cannot, so if you see in the Materia Medica Allen's keynotes, cannot stand with the eyes shut. Then because uh, they have a sensation, you know, that the legs are made up of wood. In Argentum Nitricum, the, the flatus which is there is rising to the head and producing vertigo. So vertigo in association with flatulence. Uh, you have uh, Meniere's disease type of uh, symptomatology in Argentum Nitricum. Vertigo with nausea and tinnitus. An enlarged feeling of the body of the head you will find in Argentum Nitricum. Well, one more interesting element. That is the reaction, two-fold reaction of alcohol to Argentum nitricum. If you give alcohol to the Argentum nitricum before a lecture, he will be quiet. His nerves will be quiet, but his vertigo will get aggravated because, the, because of the existing problem in the stomach. So, uh, in Argentum nitricum, how do they feel better? Better by uh, pressing bandage on the head, better by cold bath, and worse by sweets, worse by emotion because they are highly uh, excitable and nervous. Okay. Then we go to the next drug that is Bryonia. Bryonia is very easy to identify because the patient will be stiff and motionless. He will have dry mouth with thirst for cold drinks and he is better by cold in general. Why does, Argen why does Bryonia get uh, vertigo? Very important. Because the sinusitis has been suppressed by medicine, because the menses has been suppressed by, medi by medication. Suppose you want to go for a religious pilgrimage, okay, you should not menstruate, so you take tablets for that, and then you come up with vertigo. That is your bryonia vertigo. The, but the commonest uh, reason for vertigo in bryonia is cervical spondylosis, wherein you find torticollis and headache coexisting with the vertigo. Bryonia vertigo tends to fall backwards. A vertigo is felt in bryonia at the back of the head, before menses, better by absolute rest and aggravated in summer, worse by touch. Then uh, the next drug is your coculus. Why does coculus have uh, vertigo? Because of sleep deprivation. Coculus is someone like a young mother who is taking care of a baby. She is worried all the time. Other reason for uh, vertigo in coculus is your traveling sickness and low blood pressure. Okay. Now in uh, this remedy, also tumor, tumor in the brain can give rise to a coculus vertigo. Where in coculus vertigo comes in waves, hot wave, cold wave. When he is crying also there will be vertigo, when he is laughing also there is vertigo. And very important, mentally disturbed during vertigo. Instead of going in the toilet, copulus will go in the kitchen. They cannot think clearly. They cannot speak clearly. They will begin to stutter. And vertigo in copulus is felt in the forehead and he tendency to fall to one side. And uh, copulus vertigo is worse when smelling food or seeing food. Then we go to conium. Now conium vertigo, what is causing vertigo? 
injuries to the head so my friend who was bashed by the car from behind okay conium helped him injuries to the back cervical origin okay or meniere's disease also and suppressed sexuality can also give rise to this in conium mainly you find benign positional vertigo the whole room is spinning turning around when he is turning sides lying is the worst position okay especially lying on the left side and conium is better in the dark better by fasting and better by sitting then ferrum metallicum why ferrum metallicum gets vertigo because of anemia because of abuse of black tea because of uh, you know problems in the stomach and ferrum metallicum will have blackout type of a vertigo where uh, with hammering type of headache weakness of sight as if there is lot of fog when uh, ferrum metallicum sees flowing water there will be vertigo so they must uh, you know get up they must walk around very slowly and then they feel better uh, and ferrum metallicum is better in summer then gelsinium why gelsinium gets a uh, vertigo because of emotional events maybe a shock bad news and high low blood pressure or because of cervical spondylosis in gelsinium vertigo comes up from the neck okay and uh, accompanied with dumbness okay as if drunk feeling intoxicated feeling fear of falling especially when they are on the steps and uh, while walking you know they will feel imbalance the walk is not sturdy if they smoke vertigo will be aggravated and therefore gelsinium will be lying in a dark room left alone they can't be any uh, aggravated by talking aggravated by walking they will just lean on something that is gelsinium then we go to moschus moschus what is the cause of vertigo low blood pressure and a very good remedy for hypoglycemic shock shock especially in patients who are on insulin okay uh, in moschus there is a globus hystericus ball like sensation with the vertigo strong craving for coffee which ameliorates and moschus vertigo will be better by massaging better by warm and worse by bending down pulsatilla what is the pulsatilla vertigo vertigo because of overwork with headache because they are worrying whether they'll complete the work vertigo worse on sitting because pulsatilla is spineless they cannot hold their head upright which will be accompanied by sweating and chilliness also pulsatilla vertigo is because of suppression of menses right and worse lying on the left side vertigo in pulsatilla is because of bad circulation and finally the last remedy that is your theridion which i used in my case it's a, a theridion vertigo is the meniere's disease vertigo so what is there of theridion vertigo with nausea worse on stooping worse on the least movement worse on closing the eyes worse on every noise so that is the uh, therapeutic aspect of vertigo i'm very thankful to all the principals to all the stakeholders of parul university to all the faculty members all the students friends and family who have uh, given me a precious time i have really enjoyed preparing for this and i have got enriched thank you to all of you thank you parul university thank you hina ma'am thank you purav sir thank you uh, neeta sir and thank you panda sir thank you very much rajiv sir for your nice presentation now i would like to request my colleague Professor Dr. Mehta, Principal Rajkumar Homepathy Medical College, for his concluding remarks. Over uh, to Mehta, sir. Thank you, Banda, sir. Uh, regarding the topic of the Dr. Rajiv, sir, that mm -hmm. is the homeopathic man management of the vertigo and its homeopathic management, vertigo and its homeopathic management. Sir uh, divided the uh, topic into three compartments: that is case presentation, disease portion, and the. Uh, uh, management point of view homeopathic management first started with the nicely presented one case that is a uh, patient is having acute vertigo and the patient uh, having the history of the nausea and intolerance of light and the craves oranges and chili and abuse of the mud for me and uh, the totality which has been considered by the in the uh, for the prescriptive purpose that is desire oranges sensitive to noise loss of taste vertigo on closing eyes on that ground the theridion 200 <coughs> prescribing and uh, in next follow up patient is having the patient can uh, stand as well as the uh, work for long time and patient walks very freely 
and hunger pain that is reduced and mood which has been happy so uh, then sir spotted with the aphorism number 262 263 and uh, 74 to 76 then uh, the disease portion that is very important in order to prescribe we have to correlate the disease portion with the homeopathic aspect so uh, the symptoms of the uh, presentation of the vertigo that is dizzy uh, that is light headedness seizure and syncope true vertigo and uh, nicely correlate the dizzy means uh, if patient is having any ent ent complication or uh, patient is suffering from any uncontrolled blood pressure so might be suffering from dizzy feeling then light headedness which is very common in the recently in corona pandemic and uh, patient is having uncontrolled blood pressure uh, the mild headache which has been presenting symptom as well um, and fainting feeling which is better by lying down and uh, nicely correlated with the vertigo means we are moving or surrounding is moving so our medicine has been differs in, in order to prescribe the homeopathic remedy then started with the causes of the vertigo that is ac acute labyrinthine dysfunction benign positional vertigo and meniere's disease and uh, nicely correlate with the benign po uh, positional vertigo that is short lasting because of the trauma and the meniere's disease that is vertigo tinnitus and deafness so we have to correlate uh, after all uh, we are the core that is analysis of the symptoms on the basis of the problems that is onset duration uh, course of the disease in terms of the uh, vertigo that is hearing tinnitus associated symptom that is location senses and modality concomitant onset duration progress progress and possession then the miasmatic division of vertigo uh, which is very important for the for the choice of the right homeopathic medicine with nicely coated with the different miasm sura psychosis syphilis and tuberculosis and last homeopathic management according to the medicine which has been nicely correlated with the coated with the example so thank you very much sir for your wonderful ses session and nicely correlation with the knowledge of the organon correlate with the terms of the repertory as well as the materia medica thank you sir thank you thank you very much thank you all i will proceed for the uh, i invite uh, dr panda sir principal of the parol institute of homeopathy and research to proceed for the vote of thanks over to dr panda sir thank you meeta sir for giving me opportunity to give vote of thanks it is my pleasure i feel proud to give vote of thanks my uh, dear colleague rajiv sir and uh, really it is a classical presentation i hope all the audience all the participant must enjoy because from the beginning to the end systematically from case presentation to myasmatic diagnosis as well as therapeutic part everything he has covered so it is a, it, i it is worth value and uh, i am very much thankful to our management for giving this uh, opportunity this platform to conduct such type of webinar series i am very much thankful to all my colleagues because of them this type of uh, occasions is going on and we have completed 65 webinars in this way and i am very much thankful to all the audience because of them all this type of pro program is success and we are able to share our views and knowledge in between and uh, all the uh, person those who support directly or indirectly to make this program success our uh, digital team uh, jitu bhai and uh, bridges sir i am thankful to all again thank you very much and hope this type of cooperation in future thank you thank you very much thank you sir. thank you thank you sir so let us leave so thank you rajiv sir hope you thank had you, a good experience thank you okay so we leave the meeting now yes ma'am okay bye All bye everyone best. thank you okay. best of luck